the next speaker is also from uh, the Advanced Energy Storage Division, Dr. Shaheen Gonçalves Anchieta. Hi, everyone. Yes, so Shaheen is going to talk about ionic liquid, liquid uh, as a lithium battery additive. Uh, so I'm going to present um, now tune air batteries. Uh, this work is coordinated by Professor Hubens and also with, for Professor Gustav. So I'm going to show you uh, some, some advantages and limitations uh, related to the ionic, ionic liquids and also uh, most of the people know that we have some problems related to the viscosity of the ionic liquids. And I'm going to talk a little bit. So how to overcome these issues and also present some multifunctional of the ionic liquid crystals. Uh, also, I'm going to, to show you some challenges related to the electrolyte of lithium air batteries. And then I'm going to show the results that we could achieve until now. This is a new project. Uh, we are uh, working on it since one year ago. So here I, I, I took some, some prints about um, to show you that the ionic liquids are one of the hottest topics uh, related to energy storage device, not only for lithium air batteries, but for lithium ion batteries too. And also some solar cells are using ionic liquids in as, as electrolyte. So uh, we have different many applications uh, related to the ionic liquids. We can use ionic liquids for heterogeneous catalysis, for environmental sensing, for adsorption and separation of CO2, for example, as I, I show with you for energy and uh, storage and conversion as hard and soft templates for inorganic synthesis. And here on the left, uh, I'm showing you different types of cations and anions uh, that uh, are used as electrolytes. Uh, we are focused in the imidazolium salt with cation and the anion we are using bromide, but we have a lot of types of uh, cations and anions that we could use as electrolytes uh, to achieve desired properties in our electrolyte. So talking about the advantages of using ionic liquids, uh, they are salts with low melting point. And as I told you, we have different cations and anions that could be combined to obtain uh, high hydrophobicity, different properties that could um, allow us to obtain unique properties. So uh, they have uh, neglected uh, vapor pressure, which is an interesting thing related when we're talking about lithium air batteries, because when we are using oxygen flow or airflow, uh, if we have a high vapor pressure, we, we could lead to um, electrolyte drying and uh, which could cause a lot of problems in our batteries and also the death of the batteries. So this is an, an, an interesting point related to the ionic liquids. Also, they have a wide electrochemical window uh, and uh, we are always worried to improve our electrochemical window to achieve high potentials. So this is another interesting point. And the high thermal stability of the ionic liquids makes them promising to be used in the in commercial device because when, for example, if we were talking about the um, electric vehicles, for example, we need to, to have thermal stability. So as I told you, we are focused in the imidazolium ionic liquid, which is one of the most used as electrolyte. However, the imidazolium has 
the viscosity problem, because when we improve the concentration of imidazolium salts in the electrolyte medium, the viscosity also improves. However, we started to think in this project uh, to try to avoid these, these problems. So we, even with the, with the viscosity of this type uh, of ionic liquid, we could achieve interesting properties is using the ionic liquid crystals. The ionic liquid crystals, uh, they avoid problems related to uh, lithium transportation and uh, related to the ionic conductivity because uh, with this long alkyl chain, they are able to form crystalline phases and to, to achieve uh, high capacities. In, in the batteries. So looking to all this point, we, we started to, to develop this project and um, we have some challenges that we need to overcome related to the electrolytes in each and our batteries. First of all, we need to improve the energy efficiency of these batteries and also uh, improve the capacity in the life cycle of these batteries. Uh, for that, we need to reduce the over potential and uh, improve the cyclability of the lithium ion batteries. And we need to obtain chemical and electrochemical stable electrolytes, thermostables with high ionic conductivity and with uh, low toxicity. And for that reason, we started to develop this type of electrolytes using ionic liquid crystals and in lithium air batteries. So uh, we uh, are using, here I'm going to present some results that you, we could obtain until now. As I told you, is uh, only one year of project. So uh, we are studying the um, imidazolium salt with 16 carbons in the chain which is a solid uh, ionic liquid and also ionic liquid crystal. And uh, we could uh, prove that uh, this type of ionic liquid have uh, redox mediator properties, which makes them as an, bi an a bifunctional catalyst for lithium air, uh, batteries. So we are using a ternary electrolyte with the MSO, lithium perchloride, and the, the ionic liquid crystal with 16 carbons in the chain. So here I'm showing you some results that we obtained uh, on the left here. I don't know if you are seeing my, my mouse, but, but here on the left, we have the DSC, that is a thermal analysis, which show that we have a crystal phase uh, in this ionic liquid. Here on the bottom, on the left, uh, I'm presenting you the, uh, con the ionic conductive influence uh, influenced by the concentration of ionic liquid. So improving the concentration of ionic liquid, we could improve the ionic conductivity. And also, uh, even with the high viscosity, we also achieve high ionic conductivity, which is unexpected behavior uh, when we are talking about the ionic, ionic liquids. And we think that it, this is occurring due to the, the, the structural properties that we have in this type of system. We could see some shifts in the Raman spectra and also strong hydrogen bonds which are directly related to the structural properties of these materials. Also, we could see um, shifts in, in the sulfur oxygen bonds, which are directly related to the DMSO electrolyte, which means that we, the ionic liquid crystal are interacting with the DMSO. Uh, here is, is our interesting result that we could achieve. We could reduce the overpotential, the charge overpotential using these ionic liquid crystal. Uh, and also we could achieve a high capacity with these batteries. Uh, the highest one that we could found 
using ionic liquid crystals in literature. Uh, also, we, we could reduce the charge of potential with the, the redox properties of this type of ionic liquid. So improving the concentration of ionic liquid, we could reduce the charge of potential. That is a, a, a great, a great uh, point that we could achieve. Also, we could uh, achieve more than 30 cycles in, with an optimized concentration of ionic liquid. We are also developing and work with uh, the computational division of Professor Juarez, and we see by the, the theoretical model that we have this complex structure being formed with uh, lamellar and layered structure that could be influencing in, in, in this amazing capacity. Here, only to finish uh, these results, uh, we do some cycling voltammetry to, to show the redox pair of bromide uh, using the ionic liquid crystals. And here on the right uh, is the capacity, uh, the deep discharge. We could uh, achieve more than 200 hours of discharge of lithium ion battery results. So, it's one of the goals of this project. Uh, it is our second patent uh, related to the project eight and nine of division two of CIMI. And also we are joining the divisions, the advanced energy storage and the computational material science and chemistry to do, uh, uh, we are trying to finish the, the article joining the theoretical and experimental analysis of this type of ionic liquids uh, in electrolytes. I want to thank you. Thank you everyone for your attention. And also thank you Leticia for, for the amazing work that she's doing since she started this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shaini, for sharing uh, your work with us. Max is, is asking why it's, uh, what's the definition of ionic liquid? Why and why is a solid included in this oh, category? Okay. This is uh, this is an interesting point. Um, there there are some scientists that are not um, so happy with this definition. Uh, they 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 are salt in ambient temperature. And uh, the definition of uh, ionic liquid, it's uh, quite complex. So we have uh, a cat cation and an ion, and uh, not always uh, they are liquid. They, they act as a liquid, but they, uh, if they have more than eight carbons in the chain, they are solid uh, at the mean temperature. Oh, thank you, Cheyenne. So I, I'm trying other, uh, because um, you show us that this hydrogen bonds that is forming with TMSO is actually maybe driving this, yes. know, this changes through this pack. So I'm trying yeah. other types of uh, protic solvent. Oh, uh, we didn't try it, uh, another protic solvent, but we are trying to, um, to test also this ionic liquid in the supercapacitors of Professor Hudson in a closed medium. And we are, we are having great <laughs> results too. And uh, we want to study more deeply this, this structure influence in, in our system. So we sent some proposal to Max4 to try to understand this structural and this crystallinity under um, reaction medium uh, during the, the operational condition of lithium ion batteries. Uh, we, we are at the beginning of this study, let's say like this. So we don't have all the answers yet, but we are trying to find them. Thank you, Sayeni.